Hello everyone, it's LBMTG, and today we're going to be talking about when is the best time to pick up the in-standard Eldrazi. So we're talking about cards like Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher, and Matter Reshaper. Uh, they all see somewhat of extended play, whether it be modern, uh, legacy, vintage, etc., whatever it may be. Um, they all have eternal playability to them, which is going to mean that they are solid pickups for in standard because they're going to hold their value it's just a matter of when is the best time to actually pick them up and i think that time is coming very soon we're not quite at that time i saw a video yesterday mythic mtg tech with brian rowe absolutely love his channel but he said that right now is probably the best time to pick up the eldrazi and i'm saying that we should probably wait a month month and a half something like that to about Aether Revolt spoiler season. Now here's why I think so. It may seem weird at first. I completely realize that this is somewhat out of the box thinking, but just looking at the Eldrazi cards, Thought Not See, Reality Smasher, and Matter Reshaper, the big three, they all require colorless mana in the mana symbol, and the cards that made them somewhat playable in standard in a non-only colorless deck were the Origins Painlands cards like Caves of Coilos, Yavamaya Coast, uh, etc. Um, those cards are rotating out. And with those cards rotating out, there's no other good sources of colorless mana in the format currently, except for four cards that I'm going to talk about. So, I believe that we're probably not going to see anything in Kaladesh, and that's when the Eldrazi prices are going to go down. Um, and then towards Aether Revolt, I would assume we get some sort of uh, colorless producing land that does something good enough to bring the Eldrazi back for another month before they rotate, or another two months, whatever it is. Um, so I believe that if the Eldrazi are somehow going to work in Kaladesh before Aether Revolt comes out, it's going to be because of these four lands. Uh, first off, we have the Gaia Reach Sanitarium, uh, which everyone already knows that this card is good. It sees plays in the Thalia's Lancer's decks because it's a legendary land. Uh, it sees play in uh, Thermo Thing and um, decks like that. Next is Mirror Pool. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this one, but being able to create a copy of you know your Reality Smasher seems pretty good. So I feel like Mirror Pool could have some potential in keeping the Eldrazi alive. Uh, next is Seagate Wreckage. I mean, it's okay, it's not amazing, but it's a solid colorless producing land. Uh, and then finally, a card that I think is somewhat underrated, if the Eldrazi are a thing um, after rotation, is the Ruins of Orin Reef. I've seen some decks running it. Uh, there was a mono black Eldrazi deck that somebody at my store ran, uh, and it ran copies of the Ruins of Orin Reef. And it was actually surprisingly painful to play against once there was multiple Ruins of Orin Reef out on the table at the same time. Things got very difficult. So I think if somehow Eldrazi managed to stay alive past rotation, it's going to be because of those four lands. And again, we don't know what's coming out in Kaladesh yet. We haven't seen any spoilers other than one. So there could easily be something that completely blows this idea out of the water and Eldrazi becomes super playable and their prices are going to skyrocket. I just don't think that that's going to happen. I think you're going to see prices drop by at least a dollar on each card. Thought Not will probably, will probably go down to about $5. Um, Matter Reshape will probably go down, back down to about $2 after its small little price spike that it saw. So I think best time to pick up um, the Eldrazi, definitely Aether Revolt spoiler season right before the first few cards get spoiled is when I would pick them up for eternal playability. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe for more, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.